cause a drug-induced psychosis. He crashed with two other cars on the freeway. <laughs> over the freeway. Luckily, ah, everyone made it out. I can't. All right, let's go. Hey, everyone. Today, we're here for a long one, so grab your boba tea and get comfortable. The last video was fully dedicated to Gabe and all of his podcast's appearances, and if there is someone else who deserves his own video, it is our boy P and P, aka the TikTok lawyer. Once again, another discovery Ethan made while scrolling on his TikTok feed, and he found it so crazy that the next day he wanted to show his content on the podcast, which resulted in one of the hardest laughs of the year for Ethan and the crew. And also the starting point of a long-lived friendship and collaboration between P and P and our beloved podcast. And this is what we will explore in this video. Okay. Oh, speaking of TikTok, so this is my. I have a special TikTok account that I've fallen in love with. Yeah. This guy is unbelievable. This is my special find. I've been tracking this guy's page because I just couldn't believe what I'm seeing. So he is a criminal defense attorney, and he gets people off for really f crimes, and then he goes and brags about it on TikTok. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. I, th I think this may have been the first one I saw. And I was like, what? Hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Here, watch this. <laughs> All right, we're outside of Rancho Cucamonga Courthouse with my amazing client. We're here on a third time DUI case that we totally crush. There's a mandatory minimum of 120 days county jail for this kind of case. They offered us 310 days jail on this case and they weren't budget. But today we got no jail, no, no jail. jail at all. No jail. Case zero. closed, zero. zero jail. Aren't you happy you forgot to bring your toothbrush? Oh my yes, God, I'm what is really this? glad I didn't need a toothbrush. We don't need it. No, we're good. Let's go. Thank you so much. I appreciate you 100%. You're <laughs> the man. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> Yo, she, she's on her third DUI. Uh, she's supposed to go to jail for a year, but what we did, we got her off zero jail. No it's prison a, gang. Also, the other weird thing is that he's like kind of putting them on blast. Yeah, like yeah. publicly humiliating them for his <laughs> own it. practice. Domestic violence. Oh my God. Two, like I'm just saying, two domestic. Cases consolidated <laughs> into trespassing. Oh big dubs. God. Check it out. All right, we're right. Look at that big smile. Down. He's like, this man just killed his wife, and today I'm happy to say he got probation. He's oh moving in with God. his new girlfriend. <laughs> Downtown LA with my great client here. It was falsely alleged against him that he committed domestic violence against the mother of his child on one day and it was also falsely alleged again that he did it two and a half months later this was two domestic violence cases consolidated into one and we just resolved the case what did we resolve it for what was the, the conviction trespassing trespassing <laughs> We were fighting this case for about seven to eight what? months. We announced ready for trial on this case. We we're ready to go forward and beat the charges. And I'm pleased to announce that once once he's done with probation, it's going to be gone off his record once we expunge it. How you feel? I feel great. Appreciate you. Let's go. <laughs> God, he's, guy's he's like my life still sucks, you know. Uh, what a Let's dub, go. dude! I love dub. this guy, man. He's the fucking greatest. <laughs> this one goes uh, second time DUI with alcohol and cocaine. <laughs> 150 day days of jail reduced to zero. Oh my god, my man. <laughs> All right, we just got out of court in beautiful All right. Newport Beach. We're here on a second time DUI. My great client here uh, was pulled over. He had doubled the legal limit. He was actually at 0.18 blood alcohol content. He had 13 nanograms of cocaine in his blood. He found an empty vial of that also. Uh, he was looking at 150 days of county jail out here. And we just crushed it. He's gonna do how much jail? Uh, none. Zero, Zero jail. Time. Let's Zero go. Jail. <laughs> and after a year, he's gonna be all done with this case, and he can move on with his life. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate the the help and the work that you put in. This is great. 
Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's you go. know we got a sound bite that some that. Music, oh drum it. shots of the court. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I wonder if it's in like the contract they signed that you have to make a TikTok at the end. Yeah, he gives him a I discount. think what he does... 10% off yeah. if you let me uh, put you on blast on TikTok. I think what he does is he's just like, oh, there's one thing I want to do real fast. Yeah. And then they're stuck there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For a second, I was like, what if he's just joking? What if this is all just shtick? Um, no. I looked it up. He passed his bar. He's no, he's real. <laughs> no, there's a lot of them. He does this like every day. Mm-hmm. All right, we're right outside of court in Indio. It's 106 degrees. We're here on a domestic violence restraining order. Uh, my great client here uh, was accused of many, many instances of domestic violence. <laughs> many, many, many. Christ. Great she client. tried to get a restraining order. <laughs> well, if I ever get charged with a crime, I know who I'm. I know who I'm hiring. <laughs> Miss, let's go. We got to get his face on a sign just being like, let's go. That's- so the top comment on this one is no, keep this man off the road for life so you know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. All right, we're right outside of Van Nuys Courthouse. I got my great client here. He was charged with a second time DUI. Uh, he had admittedly overdosed on multiple different drugs. Oh, this, this is, I think this was the one I saw, because it's like, he admits to <laughs> oh it. Oh my God. He did all this, and we got him back on the road. <laughs> my great client here, he was charged with a second time DUI. Uh, he had admittedly <laughs> overdosed on multiple different drugs that night he caused a drug induced psychosis he crashed with two other cars on the freeway flipped over a few times luckily ah, everyone made it out I can't oh, I was just looking at his face <laughs> <laughs> this man ran over a whole family on the highway he was blackout drunk tested positive for PCP he was gonna go to jail for life and we got him out on bond, ladies and gentlemen. No jail time, <laughs> reduced to ten to ten months of community service, Le- and he got his license restated. Huge dub. All the comments are no. Keep this man off the road. Bro is unleashing super villains. Send this man back to jail. <laughs> that is the worst one by far. Uh, and this comment, this is what I was laughing at. He says the bro. <laughs> oh my god. Bro is standing there like, yeah, I did all that. <laughs> Like watch homie's face who he who he got off. <laughs> like holy <laughs> shit, dude. This is the best one. <laughs> Courthouse, I got my great client here. He was charged with a second time DUI. Uh, he admittedly overdosed on multiple different drugs that night. Get him. Caused a drug-induced psychosis. He crashed with two other cars on a freeway and flipped over a few times. Luckily, everyone made it out all right. Okay, that's good, um, at least. The fire department came with the police, <laughs> used the jaws of life, dragged him out of the car, and started fighting with them. They charged him with resisting the arrest also. Um, and <laughs> The jaws of life, and he just starts punching him. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ! Let's see how he. Let's see. Let's see how he gets him off. Oh my God! This is the best. So, um, and we're pleased to announce that he's getting out of this with just a wet reckless. Hey, a wet reckless. That's a Ryan Kavanaugh. That's the Ryan oh, yeah. Kavanaugh move. Right. <laughs> Yo, what? He's like, he went into full psychosis, overdosed on multiple drugs, caused a major wreck on the freeway, hit two other cars, and fought fighting? with the police. <laughs> and the firefighters. Re- it's just a wet and reckless, guys. We're very proud to announce that here today. Hey, here's your license, buddy. Get back on the road. <laughs> Cheers. A probation, not five years, that is normally given in a second time DUI. And most importantly, he's really changed his life around. He put himself in rehab immediately after this happened. He's okay. been in for nine months. He does meetings every single day, and he's really turned his life around. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank you so much, David, for everything I've done. All right. You know, All right, that's, well, good. that's good. That's good. That's good. I think that's awesome I, I'm at the pro end. pro rehab anti jail. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good. But holy shit. Yeah, just the way it just kept piling on. That doesn't sound like a wet a wreck, a wet and reckless to me. <laughs> that sounds like straight menace. To, like that man should not be able to drive again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I guess it's good marketing for what he does. Right. You know? yeah, it, it totally. 
You know, he he's oh, good, good at his job, evidently. <laughs> Slip. One thing I hate about this, like I'm anti-crim, like jail, but DUIs are you. If you get more than one DUI, you should never drive. Period. Ever. So this like three time DUI, we got his license back. Yeah. That shit's Just fucked. Great. Oh my gosh. There you have it. If you get if you get uh, induced psychosis and <laughs> crash into a bunch of vehicles, he's your guy. Punch a cop in the Flip face. Flip a car and attack a cop. He's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we all had a glimpse of what his content looks like, in the next clip, they managed to get in touch with him to call in and tell us more about his videos. And we will get the answer to the infamous question, how the hell does he get these people to agree to be put on blast on his TikToks? Okay, so the TikTok lawyer is coming up soon. So let's just do a quick refresher for those of you guys who aren't familiar. So <laughs> we found this guy, Panda P Firm 2.0 on TikTok quickly became one of our favorite accounts. Uh, he is a criminal defense attorney, and he just gets basically all the criminals of Gotham out. <laughs> when I uh, messaged him to schedule the time, I was like, are you good for two? And he, he replied, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. So what's his name, by the way? David. Dave? David P. David P. Let's talk to our boy. All right. I'll cue him up right now. Same. The legend himself. How you doing? How are you, my friend? You are a TikTok celebrity. Um, I'm doing good, man. Honestly, the TikTok's just for fun. How do you get these people to do the videos with you afterwards? Because it almost seems like a lot of them are like, what is going on? Like the guy where he like, he flipped his car. He fought with the police. He overdosed on a bunch of drugs. He was in psychosis. And I'm like, let's go. But he, how do you get someone to like stand and do that video with you? So Ethan, it's interesting because I watched that 20 minute clip of how you guys were going through <laughs> sure. my TikTok profile. And that was so funny to me, man. Like it was hilarious. And you guys were talking about it and uh, people comment a lot saying, oh, he probably gives a discount or he probably has it in the retainer agreement. Ethan, you were actually right, 100%. We're walking right outside the court <laughs> and I just, I just say, hey, there's one thing we got to do real quick. Do you mind if we take a little video for my social media? And that's it. You blindside them, right? <laughs> Straight up. I mean, <laughs> they are so happy, though. Yeah. Me, yeah, I'm it. sure they're just stoked. All right, they're stressing the fuck out for the entire time, from the moment they're arrested. From arrest to getting to court sometimes takes many months. Mm. They're freaking out that entire time. They're freaking out as soon as we get to court. And then that last day, they're just, they can't believe the result we got them. And they are so they love excited. You. Yeah. They would love to, to take a video with me. Mm. They love it. Now that we got that answer, Ethan is moving on with another interesting question. What is the craziest crime he got someone off of? Leading to this slightly underwhelming response. Not going to lie, considering his TikToks, I would have expected something crazier. So let, let me ask you, what's the craziest crime you've got someone off of? This was a gang possession of a concealed loaded firearm. So he was charged for carrying a concealed firearm that was loaded. We actually had a hearing to suppress the evidence. We won that hearing. And let me tell you, when I was a prosecutor, I have done probably 40 of those hearings and I never lost as a prosecutor. And, you know, I came in as the defense and I won. And it was really incredible of a victory. That's probably the craziest one that we got a full dismissal. So how much jail time was he looking at? I'm not really sure. It's probably about like a year or so. Oh, okay. but that was not look. That wasn't his main concern. His main concern was because he for a living, he does, he's a security guard and he didn't want to lose his ability to have a gun I see. to work. He was going to lose his whole career, his I entire see. career. And he had kids. His conduct was so minimal in that case. He wasn't really a threat to anybody. They were shooting a music video and it was just a bunch of people who were in a gang shooting this music video. Sometimes hey, no, they, they no harm in that, right? Let's go. let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. Now Ethan wants to put the call into a good use, asking for legal expertise about an incident we are all familiar with. 
would PNP have been able to help Ryan Kavanaugh with his infamous wet and reckless? Can I ask you a yeah. question? It's someone I know this happened to, and you tell me if you could get this person off, okay? Go for it. So he had a, he's had a previous DUI. This is his second time driving drunk, and he hits and runs a police car while drunk, already has a previous DUI, gets arrested, and what happened to him is that it got reduced to a wet and reckless. Do you think that you could do that, or is that like kind of insane to get I off? I think like I could do that, and the reason why, what really puts this guy in a good position to beat the DUI charge and or have it reduced to a reckless is because he hit and ran. Now, hit and run is, is another crime. You You're know, saying that, hit and run is a good thing in this case. It, so, I love you, dude. You're the fucking goat, bro. So are you suggesting that people hit and run if they're drunk? What? Are you suggesting that if you're drunk, you hit and run? I don't suggest it, but look, it could help. You, disclaimer, DUI is extremely dangerous. Crime is very, very bad. Now, okay, but let's say, <laughs> let's say you just freak out and you happen to have hit and run because you're sure, freaking out. Sure. Okay. Sure. They need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you were intoxicated, you were impaired by alcohol, or at 0.08 blood alcohol content or higher at the time of driving. It becomes very hard for the prosecutors to do that if, at the time you're driving, you know, you hit the car and then you ran away. And now let's say it's like an hour or two or three or four later, they come up to you. What's stopping you from saying, look, I just needed a drink after that. That was hectic. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's probably what he did. Of course, I'm talking about Ryan Kavanaugh, good friend of the show. We were wondering how someone with a previous DUI hit and run a police officer while drunk and gets reduced to wet and reckless. But I think that's a really I think that's a really good insight to what happened to Ryan Kavanaugh. Yeah, but Ryan gets fucked because he crashed into a cop car and hit and run. And if you do a hit and run and causing injury and the injury could just be like my neck hurts. He's in California. At least you're losing your license for an entire year. That actually might happen, have happened because he has a driver now. I don't think he's allowed to drive. Right. Mm. But yeah, I like that. Right. So, guys, you heard it here. If you get if you're drunk and you are in a collision, get the hell out of there. Right. So I am not going to say right. I, I actually suggest nothing. <laughs> like, look, like you do what you do, okay? Call me after you've done what you've done. I'll, I can play. I, I, look, I just play the cards I'm dealt. Love but that. I will never tell anyone commit a crime or anything. All crime is bad. Let's go. Crime, but I'll tell you, um, whenever I get a call, I just got this girl called me like last week. And she said, hey, I freaked out and I ran away. And then the cops came to my house. And I said, okay, look, look, stop tripping out, all right? It was bad that you ran away, but it kind of helped you with the DUI. <laughs> my boy, so let's go. go. Let's go yeah. right now. In conclusion, we even got free legal advice out of this. Hit and run, people. Now, let's hear what PNP thinks about being often compared to Saul Goodman in his comments. What do you think about the comparison of you to uh, Sal Goodman, for example? <laughs> I love Saul Goodman. I love that show. You um, like the way he does law? <laughs> I don't think he does it ethically. I can't. I, it's been a while since I watched the show. Um, and I remember watching the first seasons when I opened up my own office. And I really felt him because he was down. He was like at rock bottom, wasn't yeah. making any money, and neither was I. And as lawyers, there are a lot of rules of ethics we have to follow mm -hmm. with every regard, and especially when, when you're trying to get new clients. And I think he was committing some ethic violations or something like that, which I understand when you're in a tough place, like you just kind of want to say, fuck it, let's make some money. Um, but... You know, I think it was funny, and I like that he was a criminal lawyer. I wish he did more practice of law. I don't think he ever tried a case. How's business now? Are you doing well? Money's good? Uh, thank God we're doing great. Yeah, thank you. Like, it's, you know, it's just a blessing. You know, we really started with nothing. Here. Now let's talk about ethics a bit. Ethan asks P&P &P if he ever had second thoughts after keeping a client out of jail. 
which leads to an interesting discussion about rehabilitation, which ends up winning Ethan over. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever got someone off where you're like, mm, maybe that guy should be in jail? Never. Not I don't believe close. you. Not even close. <laughs> um, there have been times where, honestly, people have been in jail, and I just wish that they could have gotten help instead. Mm. That's true. That's true. I think that we need to send people to jail. We do. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it has to be done a lot of the time just to keep society safe. There are alternatives to jail. There's rehab. You know, outpatient rehabs are great. You know, you can make someone do a ton of labor where they go pick up trash on the freeway. And if they don't do it, then they can go to jail. You can really punish people without sending them to jail. And Amen, brother. I'm right there with videos. you. Yeah. A lot of people comment my video saying, no, send them back. Back where? Like, send them to jail. They should go to prison for this DUI. Okay, well, if you send people to jail, like, oh, you did, you committed a DUI or a drug or alcohol substance abuse related offense. Okay, yeah, let's send you to jail. What happens when you send this person to jail? They come out and they go right back to doing what they were doing, right? Most likely. What if you sent them to rehab and you gave them a little love and you encouragement to really turn their lives around? Wouldn't that be better for society? You got to prevent, you need to be preventative and not yeah, punitive. You do. Exactly. Let's so, go. Yeah, let's go, brother. So I have my own personal philosophy of how I practice criminal defense. Whenever I get a client, I just try to work with them, see how their life is. Why this happened? Or do they have a drinking problem? A lot of my clients, I get them into AA right away. I And I talk to them about how they feel about their lives. And I counsel them. I've seen the work I've done on people's lives. Some people are not receptive to it. I've had really sad times where I've worked really hard with the client and then they just relapse and screw their whole case up. And, you know, I've had to go my separate ways from some people, but I'll tell you each one of my clients that I've gone all the way for. And each one of my clients I've posted a video for has really worked on themselves and they really deserve the result that they got. That's they nice. Really do. That's actually really nice to hear. Well, there you go. You really are doing a public service. You're keeping them people out. Let's get them better. And let's get them going. <laughs> we already got the hit and run advice, but for the next question, when pulled over, should we always refuse the breathalyzer test? Get ready to take notes, people. Do you recommend if somebody gets pulled over and let's say they had a couple of drinks, should you always refuse the, the blower? I, I would say so. Refuse the, it's the preliminary alcohol screening device. That's what we actually call it or the breathalyzer at the scene where you get pulled over. That's optional. Refuse it. The crime ended as soon as you were pulled over because now you're no longer driving. It's driving while impaired mm -hmm. or driving while point away or higher. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're pulled over, the crime is, is over. And now they have to prove that before you were pulled over, you were impaired. Mm -hmm. You're giving them evidence of what your blood alcohol content was right at the time of driving when you agree to do that optional test. Now imagine if you refuse that one and you go to the station and it maybe takes an hour, two, three to take the mandatory one, then you're, you've burnt some alcohol probably Definitely, that you yeah, can help out. Sure. I, I have had cases. You that. Yeah, you can I've refuse cases, and then go do a blood test. Really? I've had cases dismissed because it's taken longer than three hours to do the mandatory blood test mm. <clears throat> the or breath test. Mm. And that's because the toxicologists cannot reverse extrapolate what your blood alcohol content could have been at the time of driving if it's been more than three hours. Wow. So that's kind of faulty. Well, there you go. That's actually good advice to all my drunk drivers out there. What other kind of like basic legal recommendations do you have? Because actually I love, I think it's really interesting to get. So if you're beating up your partner, do you have any advice to how not to get caught? I'm just kidding guys. Just kidding. If it's domestic battery, it's kind of, he said, she said, if you are the victim and you really want this person to go down, uh, it's tough. I mean, like save photos of your bruises, you know, cooperate with the police. Know that if you're going to start testifying, like all angry and upset at, at this person for hitting you, you're going to lose a little bit of credibility. And it's going to show that, you know, they're really angry at this person. Maybe they just made this up. Just, you know, be sincere and don't go over the top. 
Because as a defense attorney, I would use the anger against a victim. <laughs> of course. I would. That's what Sal, I mean, that's it's my what job. Sal would do. I have yeah, to. Exactly. It's so, not practice not to. Yeah, that's true. Last question before ending the call. Uh, does PNP ever represent victims? Because from what we've seen, he seems to always be on the side of the defendant. Maybe there's a reason for that. So you're usually defending the, uh, of course, the the violent, uh, the the violent person. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> what if you get a good result? You know, like well, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like that they do it. But the thing is, when they come to me, it's already done. <laughs> Uh, so someone's got to do it, right? Somebody's got to do it. You, you know, haven't, it, had, it really you haven't had the, like, the no. victim be the one you represent, though? I've represented victims before, and I've had situations where both parties just beat the shit out of each other. I've had, I've had a situation where a, you know, cute, skinny girl stabbed her boyfriend with the scissors, and he went to the police, and we got that. We got that rejected from filing, which is a dismissal before the case is even filed. Were you rejecting the cute skinny girl that stabbed him? I, we took, I took her on as a client. Yeah, you were representing the, the cute skinny girl that stabbed yes. your boyfriend. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you got that thrown out. Awesome, dude. So do you think that she's going to stab again or you think it was a one-time stab? I think it was a one-time stab. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I love it. Oh, is there, so basically, your advice is don't talk to the cops in any situation. Refuse the blood test. If you commit a crime, run from the scene. We're all good, right? So, so here, let me give you a disclaimer, Ethan. <laughs> Nothing I have said in this podcast is legal advice. Oh, okay. okay? <laughs> but it is, they are things that I have seen. And I have seen when when these certain things happen the way I've described, the results were much better than other ones in the cases I have seen. There you have it. Let's go. All right. Thanks for calling, David. You take care. Thanks for sharing. Great to hear from you. And, uh, you know, when one of us get uh, when, you know, get into trouble, we're going to call you first. OK, God forbid. But I'm always there for you. Yeah, I <laughs> thank you so much for that. having me on. God All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you, David. After the call ends. Dan, as always, being the voice of reason, tries to defend the role of criminal defense lawyer to the part of the audience that was uncomfortable during that call. I And you know what? For the most part, it looked like the audience was enjoying this. I did see some people that were uncomfortable with this, and I understand. You got to keep in mind, you know, it is a good thing that defense lawyers exist. And, you know, it can be uncomfortable at times, but you, it is your constitutional right to have representation and... You know, uh, a lot of people are accused of crimes that uh, falsely or that they didn't commit or, you know, will suffer a consequence from that accusation <laughs> that, like he was alluding to, you know, the consequence far exceeds, uh, you know, proportionally what uh, damage was done to society. And so, you know. They deserve the best representation. Actually, he, I, he won me over when he was like, these people who I represent really have made an effort to rehabilitate themselves and going to prison is not going to help. It's not going to help anyone, you know, and mm -hmm. prison is really the worst way to rehabilitate anybody. Let's be honest. So let's go. You know, I love that, though. The girl stabbed her boyfriend. He's like, yo, we got that shit thrown out before it even reached the fucking clerk. Let's go. Legend. <laughs> By the way, what I nailed it. He so, he just blindsides him, and yeah. he straight up admit that he's like, "Yeah, I just blindsided him." That was the funniest him. part by so far. Funny. I can't believe. <laughs> I just fucking blindsided him. They didn't say shit, dude. It's awesome. And here we go again. Second call in from P and P. As Ethan has a very important question about something that came out recently regarding a dog story you might recall. But first, Ethan wanted to go back to the fact that he puts his clients on blast. Does he ever worry on the potential repercussions these people might have? Don't you ever worry that you're ruining their life by blowing them up on TikTok? If a prospective employer saw you talking about how this dude was like clawed out of the jaws of life after attacking a cop. You know what I mean? Like if they, well, his, his name's not in the TikTok, right? So why would he see it? I mean, they can't, they're wearing a mask, you know, they can't be identified, even though... Uh, I tell my clients, you know, I talk to them, Hey, are you going to be willing to do a video with me? If you don't mind, you know, would you do it? 
And if they say, yeah, which only like one or two people who have, have ever said no, uh, if they say, yeah, I tell them, hey, I'd appreciate it if you can bring a mask so I can keep you anonymous because sure. I, I don't okay. want people out there knowing who you are. Responsible king. And that's how it is. Smart, smart, smart. Now, Ethan is checking whether David's last appearance on the show got him any new great clients from the foot soldiers that we would possibly be seeing on his TikTok soon. Well, let's move on. I brought you on today and so nice to see you again, David. How have you been, by the way, since our last appearance? You were such a hit. I hear that the comment section is turned positive for you, which I love to hear. Have you got any Thank calls you. from fo- from Fooper Troopers, uh, fans of ours who got who hit and run drunk or? Uh, the day we did the the last show, my phone was blowing up mostly with people who just wanted legal advice, and I spent like a few hours just giving people legal advice. Uh, I have retained a few clients. Wow, uh, nice. Watch the show. All um, right. I, Let's go. Yeah, I don't know how many, probably like like maybe two or three. You know, I've been doing good work for them. Love I'm that. I'm to report back. I can't wait to see one of our fans getting blasted on TikTok. You got to let well, me know. We might have one soon for you. So <laughs> let's see. Now on to the real reason Ethan wanted PMP to call in, to give his professional insight on something. But before, let me give you a little trigger warning. Not even sure what kind of warning this should be, but let's say we are about to hear some wild stuff involving dogs. I did cut out the most graphic parts, but still. So the reason I I asked you to call in today, as I told you on TikTok, we have an urgent and uh, immediate important matter. There's There's a big YouTuber. So many years. His name is Steve Will Do It. He did a podcast recently where he confessed in great detail to how he jerks off his dog. And I was curious if you have any insight to the legality of this. I'll play you a brief clip, okay? My ex-girlfriend's dogs. Yeah, I I miss. I swear I really miss That's Dude, that's the thing. Oh, dude, when we broke up, we broke up for eight months. How how I started talking to her, I started messaging Donald on Instagram. I really miss her dogs, man. This is like kind of crazy I'm saying this, but... I'm the cool dad now. Okay. And where are you going I'm with the this? favorite. You're the favorite, you're the cool and dad. And two, you can control where the cum goes. What are you talking about? Oh, how do you do this? So I get IVs all the time. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know they wear gloves? Yes. So lately I've been just like, bro, so you just go, you put on the glove, and you said Donald, you just go in on his stomach, or like on his stomach right here. Or like you go cow style, cow style. Because the cow style is what better, are you talking better about for catching. Right now? And then you go and usually just play like a like a like I like cartoons, like Disney, like family friendly and shit. Uh, and you just yeah, I, they go on and on. But there's the admission. Now, obviously, there's laws against what you can and can't do to animals, right? I mean, we have so so. Can you jerk off a dog here? Uh, First of all, it's illegal. There are crimes. Like bestiality is illegal, animal abuse illegal. However, him just admitting it is not chargeable. Mm. There is a legal doctrine called the corpus delecti rule, which means you can you cannot be guilty of a crime if the only evidence are is your admission. Mm. There has to be your admission plus the evidence, some other evidence. Right. So you can call his ex girlfriend and say, "Hey, is this your dog? Have you noticed anything weird?" Boom, you can then there could be something actionable. Speaking on the podcast is it's not going to be chargeable, but it's definitely a crime. All right. Listen, David, you continue to be the man. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. And once we have another pressing uh, legal matter, I'll reach out and hopefully you got time uh, for that. Feel one free. Well. Anytime. I'm always down. You're going to trial love right now. Guys. Uh, actually, my business partner is in trial right now on a pretty difficult car accident case, so I'm just uh, manning the fort. All right, well, uh, let's let's get that monster back on the road, all right? Let's do it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. go. All right, all right David, we love you. Guys. All right, talk, talk soon, buddy. Thank we'll you. See you well. This next clip is the third call in from PNP, and yet again, Ethan is putting his lawyer skills to the test. Would he be able to help out this driver from this viral clip we're about to watch? Hey, PMP, you're out. You're out of the uh, costume today. <laughs> costume. Hey, how you doing? So I wanted what? to show you. Um, you're the expert on kind of getting uh, drunken um, <laughs> catastrophes, walking calamities, uh, representing them to your, the best of your ability. So here's one. 
I hope you haven't seen this video yet. I want to get your legal, if you were to give her legal advice, I kind of just want to pick your brain about what would you tell her or someone in a similar situation, the best way to behave, okay? This person's sparking, all doors open right here. I cannot believe this guy's car is even going down the 405 freeway, but he's making it happen here on one My wheel, apparently. My mom drives apparently. on the 405. Maybe it's, have you heard from your mom in the past couple of days? <laughs> no, that's not okay. my mom's car. Okay, all right. Rather dangerous situation happening here on the 405. Tailgate open. There's no tailgate party going on in sight, but this guy is just letting it all hang loose right now. I mean, she's driving within the lane. That's what I yes. would well. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so are you possibly potentially seeing this like your honor? She clearly is sober. She's in the lane driving straight down. Would that be something you could use or is that unreasonable? <laughs> I mean, we can't tell if she's listening to music. <laughs> music could be super loud, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. So potentially she, doesn't, she couldn't. She could not hear the wind or feel the wind of the trunk <laughs> open or her. Why is the trunk open? Maybe. I mean, is it malfunctioning? What's, mm. what's the deal with the trunk? Oh, that's a good point. Could Maybe that model place. has a history of malfunctioning trunks. Mm -hmm. Miss, get out of the car. Yeah. Are you on right now? No, not at all. My car gave out. I mean, I had somebody help me before. And apparently the brake did not stop. Do you know you're driving on three wheels right now? Your wheel's completely out. You just crashed into this gentleman right okay, here. You I'm, almost You're a off. hazard. You're on the freeway. You crashed. Mice on the freeway. Okay. On the three wheels. I'm going to trade in. You need to get out of the car. I will. Just leave Just the get car. out of the car, just miss. Just leave the car. You're on right listening now. You're to on them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, she's... Yeah. She's getting out of the car. It's all good, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go. Mm -hmm. I mean, she crashed into the guy. So she did see. crash into him, but we don't know how bad it was. It could have been a little bump there. You see the damage to the back of his car? I can see it. You know, I can't mm -hmm. tell, but based on if we could, if we can Maybe just. Maybe small damage, it seems. If it we could take a guess based on the video, it looks very minor. Yeah, probably just a bump. Scratch. You are on some drugs right now. Oh my God, absolutely Put not. your car. No. Now, is that okay, going to be... So those pills, I don't know what the one on the left is. The one on the right, the rectangular one, looks like Xanax bars, which will... You, you can definitely get a DUI for that. Mm. Um, what's that powdery stuff? It looks like she's... <laughs> I think it might have know. been one that she sat on and crushed. Here, let me try to... It, or if she, maybe she's breaking the Xanax. That's yeah, like, here, you can see it better here. Yeah, that that looks like crash. That looks like... A crushed pill, actually, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean that's in plain view, also. Um, all right, so here, here's the thing: the fact that she's driving with the trunk open and her tire completely off, like <laughs> it's literally, it's a miracle that she was even able to stay within one lane. Yeah. Um, but that is evidence that she's totally oblivious and on Xanax or, or whatever it is. But, I mean, the analysis doesn't end right there. I mean, then she crashes into this guy. So there's, there's DUI, okay? And then there's DUI causing injury. DUI causing injury could be charged as a felony or a misdemeanor. It depends on if that guy that she crashed into tells the police that he's feeling any pain. She, she can get hit with a DUI causing injury. Now, the, the, thing, the good thing for her is she has a defendable case. I've defended cases like hers successfully. <laughs> uh, and and the, reason why, the reason why is, look, like a cop is going to have to get there after this video is taken see that she has like pills and um you know hopefully he can say he had probable cause to make an arrest right given that he has probable cause to make an arrest and it's tough man he's gonna have to like talk to these witnesses and hopefully they'll show them the video and after seeing the video i think the cop would have probable cause to make the arrest once they do that 
They can do field sobriety tests. Um, those aren't very accurate. And even if he gives a breathalyzer, that's only, that can only detect alcohol. What they're going to need to do, um, if the cop is trained as a drug recognition expert, they can do the correct types of field sobriety tests. If not, they might need to call one in. But in any event, they can make the arrest, take her to the station or to a hospital and uh, get her blood, you know, get her blood from her. And if she refuses, the cops can get something called a McNeely warrant. So you're feeling pretty good about this case. If she comes to you, she's like, yo, this video, they got this video. You're feeling like this is not a problem. We're going to be saying my great, my great client here in just a couple of weeks. From Community now. service. And- yeah. I mean, she's doing like some great <laughs> driving. They're staying in the middle of the road despite her wheel being like that. Her performance is stellar. I mean, could real. you really say that in front of a judge, David? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. would say that. Yeah, I'd say that before 12 jurors. I'd say it just like this. Straight face. <laughs> What's the big deal? They have, to, they have the duty to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt to a unanimous jury. Twelve jurors. You know, I'm curious. One whole oh, one, one, one motherfucker yeah, out there one. who's got a who's got a drug addict mom, right? Right. Speaking of illegal substances, Ethan had to ask David about something, mostly to remind us about that thing he did once. You know the thing. Have you ever tried meth, David? No. No. <laughs> just ask, because you. I don't know. You seem to. Yeah. I mean, just try it once. I don't know. I smoked crack once. Yeah, I mean, uh, in high school, you know, but didn't really do enough. So you, oh, you, so you did try meth. Yeah, but like yeah, I did yeah, yeah. high yeah. school, didn't do enough, and I was like, oh, this good man. I did a whole bunch of shit in high school, and yeah, I went to rehab. And stuff. <laughs> okay, so he knows. Yeah. Oh, you went to? What did you go to rehab for? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, it's. Long story. You don't, I don't have know to talk. To get in, yeah, it's right fine. here, but it's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, if you're not comfortable, <laughs> I won't press you on it. All right, David. Thanks, man. I'm good. I'm happy to know this woman's back on the road. Thanks to David from P and P. Let's go. All right. And just remember, David, you got to <laughs> share. You got. You, you got to share the roads with this lady too. All right. <laughs> Hey, I, I'm going to take the 405 to go home right now. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes One of your clients out there is going to T-bone your ass and <laughs> send you to an early grave. All right, David, you're the greatest. Keep slamming, okay? Keep keep at it. Thanks we love for you. calling in. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's Thanks, care. David. All right. David, everybody, from PNP. This is the fourth call in with PNP to again consult him on a recent news story related to Liver King. But first, let's talk about his latest great client seen on his TikTok. America's favorite attorney. Hey, how's it going? How are you? you? You're all suited up. You got court today? Yeah, I was at court this morning. Absolutely yeah, crushing. Yeah, let's Absolutely. Go. Yeah. We, uh, I posted the video with the client. And I, I didn't think the client was going to be willing because it's a very serious case. He was falsely accused of sex battery. Um, and it just really turned his life upside down. And I know this type of stuff happens every day and it's despicable, but, uh, you know, people are truly falsely accused of that. You're saying this man is innocent. Innocent as fuck. Okay. Innocent as fuck. Right outside of court with my great client. Uh, he was falsely accused of a sexual battery. Okay. This is a very serious case. It's a very serious allegation. Okay. It's a horrible thing to do, a horrible thing to commit sexual crimes. However, it's extremely horrible to falsely accuse an innocent person of that. So my client here was facing lifetime registration as a sex offender. And, and that's much worse than any jail time he was facing. And I'm pleased to announce that today the case was dismissed. All right. We came to court for the first time about a month ago. My client exercised his constitutional right to a speedy trial. We did not get any continuances. We went. We wanted to go straight to trial. Trial was about to start, but the prosecutors today dropped the case. How do you feel? I feel great. This is unbelievable. What you do. David, what the, the way, fuck? By the way, <laughs> what is uh, that? I had someone edit the video to like muffle his voice, just to just to keep him anonymous because I. 
you know, I, it's, I don't want any trouble uh, in the future. Uh, you can all see the comments. People are saying like, oh, he's guilty for sure. He's guilty for sure. There's no way he's guilty. Like, trust me, I've got like crazy witness statements on this case. Like we did a crazy investigation here. It, so I just wanted to keep him safe. Do you do you put the mask on him to keep his animatity? Is that your yeah, suggestion? Yeah. yeah. And and those that the glasses too, those are mine. Trial was about to start, but the prosecutors today dropped the case. How do you feel? I I don't think you helped. He sounds more like a Batman villain than ever. <laughs> I feel great. I was shivering. I was scared. I didn't know what's going to happen in my life. With all this accusation, my word against her word. But finally, as you said the first day to me, you came true. It was as fast as it could have been. And I, am, I cannot be any happier. I really appreciate everything you did for me. And God bless you. And I would recommend <laughs> you to anybody and everybody. That's right. I hope you never be there. But if anything happened, I would recommend him as number one. I know a lot of attorneys. Yes. I have a lot of attorneys in my own family. But I picked him <laughs> because I trusted him. That's an endorsement. I'm glad that I did. All right, we'll let's hurt. go. Yeah, that, that one wasn't as funny, and I'll tell you why. It's because you, you didn't outline what he was accused of in great detail. That's my favorite part. Is there any chance that your client there has drove under the influence of some drug, crashed into a police car, got taken out by the jaws of life, or fight the police, or not anything like that? Not oh, this okay. one. Okay. Not this Dang, one. Dang, that's, those are my favorite. Now, David will explain to us why he does not like to defend so-called actually innocent people. I know, me too, but he's actually a good guy. And I don't like representing actual innocent people. It's it's so much pressure for me because it's like... Damn, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up. Back up. Say that again. Say that from the beginning. I, I, I don't know if I misheard you. It's really difficult representing people who are totally innocent, wow. but falsely accused. So <laughs> you're saying actually innocent victims are the hardest to defend, huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> look, 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 there's legally, there, there are people who, who, who are not guilty, okay? But that's different than if you're actually innocent. Right. Guilty means guilty right. beyond a reasonable doubt. You can be not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but... You know. But he still fucking did it. You know what I mean? Like OJ. Yeah, this guy... We're talking like guy, when you say... You, you, when you say uh, innocent with like air quotes, we're talking like OJ innocent, right? I, in my opinion, OJ... Look, OJ had a lot of, a lot of evidence, man. I'm telling you, like... <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad OG is out there living his best life in Florida, golfing every day. Back to Liver King and the controversy on his steroid use. Does David think he could be facing consequences for this? Let's hear. All right. So are you familiar with the Liver King controversy that we I wanted to ask you about at all? Um, I've seen his videos in the past and I have I've seen some stuff about. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the controversy. I. I don't know if I know everything, but I've definitely seen a good amount of content in the last like few days. So Liver King sure. obviously owns this huge supplement brand. He sells supplements and he isn't, we watched a clip of him saying verbatim, one of the best things for my brand has been this question of, are you on steroids? He said, nothing has helped my brand grow more than people ask me, am I on steroids? And the answer of course is no, I'm all natural. And he has talked over many times on TikTok, on lots of different shows about how these supplements and his lifestyle uh, enables him to have this physique and he's not on steroids. Well, it's come out recently. He's on an, an, an incredible amount of steroids, seven, seven different steroids, $13,000 a month. You've got these leaked emails where he's talking about his blood work and he's talking about uh, all this stuff he lied about. And so my question is, if he's selling the supplement with the promise that uh, it's more like an indirect promise, maybe uh, if we're getting into the legal aspect of it, although I'm sure a lawyer would do a, a deeper analysis, what he has done is, is essentially lied outright 
provably in an effort to sell his supplements. Is this, what do you think? Is this, is this, I know morally it's fucked up, but legally, what do we think about this? It's illegal. It's and illegal. So I don't know. Do you know what state he's in? The Texas, Republic, he's the in Republic of Texas. <laughs> okay. The sovereign nation but of Texas. I don't know about Texas law, but I know that, uh, I mean, look, he's selling these things online, right? So, so if I'm in California, which I am, I, I could just buy this stuff online. Yes. Yes. Uh, I can, I can speak about at least California law. Uh, there are a couple laws at least that he's violating, uh, both criminal and civil. Uh, the criminal, it, it's not that bad. It's just a misdemeanor, like false advertising. It's not, a, it's, it's honestly not a big deal, but if we inject those facts that he he's made representations that I'm natural and like, you just got to take my product and this is do what I do as I preach, you know, and, and this is, this can be your body. He could potentially be guilty of that uh, because it's it's a false advertisement. Call that a but, false advertisement. But here's the thing: <laughs> even stronger than that, okay? For, forget the criminal thing; like they're never going to come after him for that. But what can happen is he can get sued, and it can even be a class action, like a really, really big bad class action where there's punitive damages at stake, like. I wouldn't be surprised if he can go bankrupt over this. It sounds, Seriously. wow. Okay, that's and, real interesting. And, that's interesting to hear. It's going to be fascinating to to see how this develops because it seems pretty fucked up, but thanks for the insight, David, as always. Yeah. No, I mean, he, and I feel bad because, like, I, I think he's been on your show. I saw that and seems like a nice guy, but, um, you know, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, the, if a case can be made that people were deceived on a great scale, you know, he, he could really be facing a huge class action. Like huge. All right, David, you're the greatest, man. Keep letting those keep letting those crim I mean, innocent people off. OK, I will. Yeah, I will. Good. Thank you, Ethan. All right. Thank you, buddy. Take you're care. the best. Let's go. David from PNP Attorneys, the one and only. <laughs> Let's go. America's favorite lawyer. Let's go. <laughs> David was invited to be part of the 2022 live show to give his green light whether Ethan could show to the audience his beloved prolapse video. Unfortunately, this will have to wait because there might be some minors in the audience. Starts with let's, ends with go. Let's go. Okay, so as you guys know, we've been showing um, our guests a video of a prolapse. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Well, okay. My question is, there's like a minute clip of a really graphic video of two men prolapsing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important. And then I said, I said, can I legally show this to the audience? Now I thought, I thought that we sold the tickets as an 18 plus show, but I think it was nope. all ages. <laughs> Dan, no. Nope. Now, now I don't see anyone under 18. Can you hit the lights on the audience, please? <laughs> Probably not the best way to go. <laughs> Well, hold on, hold on. Don't play that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not good tech. Which one of you? No, 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 no. Wants to come home with me? No, 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 no. But so, okay, so uh, here's my question. PNP David, if you will. Can I show the video to the audience? Now, before you answer, Dan, roll the video. <laughs> not of the prolapse, no. but of the reactions. Oh, okay. Oh, it is. <laughs> you want to show them that one? Oh, that's making me fucking gag, bitch. <laughs> that's actually our friend of the show, Hunger FF. I love Hunger, hunger but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, no. Fuck. What the fuck? Why is she fucking up? 
Okay. Yeah. So that, obviously it's pretty that graphic. That is not an exaggeration. David, oh. come here. I want to show you the video, and then you can tell. Make sure you can get a good shot of David's face, camera people. Yes. Yeah, so, whenever you're ready. Go Only ahead. Ethan can make prolapses great again. <laughs> Should I do? Should I use the audio or not? What do you think? No, okay. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. Oh. No, you have not. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Just How wait. long is this? <laughs> yeah, Ethan, you know what? What is your legal advice? <laughs> I came up out here inclined to tell you to show everyone that video, but... Well, hold on. I need my, my, uh, the advice from my attorney because I do not want to get on a sex offender list for showing this video. Look. It's not worth it. That was... Top five fucked up <laughs> shit I've ever fucking seen. And this man talked about jaw life. As much as I want you to show everyone so that they can have the reaction I had, that's a surefire way to get on the sex offender registration. <laughs> right? <laughs> thank you. Hell thank yeah. You, Are you thank kidding you, thank me? You. Oh my yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Now, can I ask you this? If we sell our next show 18 plus, could we show it? I think so. I think so. <laughs> You think so? Because I don't want to take any risks. Maybe 21 plus? Maybe we'll do some homework. Um, I'm like 99% sure you can. Yes. All right. Next time, next time, guys. Yeah, listen, you guys got to come to the next show if you want to see the prolapse. A little bit of a selling opportunity for my <laughs> It'll be worth it. Thank you, David. Appreciate that for your legal advice. Anyone, ha anyone have any legal questions for David real fast? I'll field one. Anyone been uh, drunk driving, uh, <laughs> molesting, um, domestic abuse? What do you got? That guy over there looks like he's uh, been through some shit recently. You been through some shit? What do you got? This guy's got some. I hit a parked car. He hit a parked car? Was there anyone in, in there? No, but I was security in the parking lot. Did you run away? I was trying to do it in the He says he hit a parked car. There was no one in the car but security were, was trying to get him to stay. Do I got that right? Alleged, all alleged, thank allegedly, you. Allegedly, allegedly. All right, so Hello. when security allegedly stopped you, <laughs> were you in the act of trying to run away? I offered them some money if I could just leave. Uh-oh. It's pretty slick. What do you think, David? But they, but they said no. <laughs> How much you offer me, him? I offered them 20 each. And they, made me, they, and they said no, so I waited for the guy and gave him a hundred instead. Oh. And he was cool with it. So there's no legal you're, issue. Yeah, you're, you're all good. good. Yeah, you're all good. I, you're I, all wait, good. wait, 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 wait. Let's go. I didn't have a license at the time. Oh. oh. Well, don't. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Allegedly. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Now you're Cut. fucked. <laughs> you were fine. Now you're fucked. <laughs> Did this happen in Los Angeles? <laughs> um. Riverside County? Oh, you're fucked. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Appreciate you, buddy. We got to keep it rolling. You're the right. king. Thank you. That's David. P &P Let's go. Back to the podcast studio, and P&P &P is calling in again, this time to tell the story of how he saved the day for Ethan and Gila's nanny. Also, for context, right before Ethan hurt his neck, that's why he's in a neck brace during that clip. So we have PMP on the line. We do. America's favorite attorney. Yep. Let's go. Oh, wait, let me get my neck brace on before he calls in. Yeah, actually, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You're welcome. You should, right, ask him, you should ask him if he's ever had a, a client put one of those on. Too, good so. fucking question, dude. That looks good. You like it? Yeah. It's like elongating. You're giving neck. <sighs> Oh, we're in? What's up, David? We're in. My boy. Oh, what's Sorry on? for the delay. Let me put my volume up. I'm doing work just sitting here and, you know, all right, here we are. <laughs> David, as I sit here before you with a neck brace, have you ever instructed um, a client to wear one of these? <laughs> that is outside the scope of my expertise. <laughs> I, I have definitely had clients 
go to doctors who recommended that. Ah. Uh, so you wouldn't recommend it, but you know a guy who might. I, <laughs> So the reason I actually wanted to talk to you is, first of all, to tell this incredible story and to thank you personally. Our nanny, who works mm -hmm. for us, was was in this crazy situation where she has her her room, not roommate, but housemate. They were sharing an apartment together. The guy just went, he, I guess, started doing drugs and just went, had like a whole episode and he was like threatening her, moving people in, doing all kinds of crazy shit. It was a month to month lease and she wanted, she was scared. So I said, just leave, dude. Don't be there anymore. Cause you know, we've seen that. She was scared for her safety. You know? I said, get out now and we'll yeah. deal with the consequences of that. So she moved out and the landlords were like, no, you're, you're still there. Your name's on the contract. You're, you're liable for all this shit. Do I have that right, David? The case for your nanny was crazy. We had the shadiest landlords I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And David went out there. He didn't charge us. He didn't charge my nanny. And I got to say, David saved the day. Yeah. He did it. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking you, he, go. David came in go. and he got that. He got her off the fucking lease. It was yeah. amazing. He actually did. She was so stressed during the whole time, and I've never seen her like that. And so you really saved the day. Can I tell you guys something? I'm a member of this Facebook group for lawyers, okay? And there's thousands of lawyers in here, and they all ask, ask for legal advice or ask mm. for referrals for other lawyers. And, you know, I asked, like, hey, this is the situation I'm in. Are there any lawyers in here? Do you recommend anyone that can help? And everyone said the name of this one lawyer, hey, come chime in. She chimed in and apparently she's like one of the greatest tenant lawyers in LA. And her answer is, oh yeah, you don't have a case because X, Y, Z and oh yeah, this is, it's not a case. So, you know, no one can really help this person. Booyah, I answered the question correctly. I'm like, what's wrong with you? It didn't make oh. sense. I got, I got a lot of that too, where it's like, well, no, it's her fault because she's on the lease. But that didn't make sense at all because the guy's threatening her. She's supposed to stay there and like put and risk bodily harm? To her all safety. right, so here's, yeah, yeah, right. Here's the law, okay? Technically, yeah, she was on the hook because they both signed the lease and she wasn't allowed to just leave while he's there. And they were not dating. They didn't have a dating relationship. That would have made things a lot easier to get out because she could have claimed domestic violence. So right. uh, this is how shady the property manager was. This guy went crazy and was even threatening the property manager. They knew he and was on him. she asked your nanny, hey, can you come to the police with me to report this guy? And she oh. said, yeah, of course I'll come to the police with you. Anything to help you guys. I'm a great tenant. <laughs> And she goes to the police and reports the guy with the manager right there. And they don't give her any credit for that. And so the law says you could you can get out of your lease if you have a restraining order against your roommate. Obviously, she doesn't want to get a restraining order against some guy because that's going to rile him up and make him go crazier. Mm -hmm. Or I don't even know if she had order. cause for a restraining order, technically, right? Arguably, it's much tougher if you never had a dating relationship with someone. It gets complex, but if you've ever dated someone, uh, then you get a domestic violence restraining order, which you only need to show more likely than not that you needed it. Um, and that's much easier. And hearsay is admissible as evidence. But since they didn't have a uh, dating relationship, you would need to prove it by clear and convincing evidence. And hearsay is not admissible. So it becomes tough. And if you lose these, mo if you lose a request for a restraining order, the prevailing party is allowed their attorney's fees. Oh, yeah, oh. that's tough. It's tough. And if she wasn't living there anymore, a judge might have not have even granted it for that purpose. So the next the next thing you could do is show a police report that based on the police report, it evidences that you're a victim of domestic violence. And then we run into the same problem because this was not domestic violence because they never had a dating relationship. 
just being a roommate wasn't enough. Uh, sh- we showed the police report and they said, yeah, no, this isn't going to fly. And I've consulted with a lot of these attorneys. I have friends that, that do landlord tenant law. None of them wanted to jump in on this. And they're all telling me, yeah, yeah, they're right. They're right. And at so this point, a- just to interject, I offered them $2,000. I said, I'll pay you guys two grand just to drop it. And we can all part ways amicably. And they said, they told us to fuck off, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point, we like, showed them what a you want. report. They so said crazy. no. Yeah. We offered them 2000 bucks. They said no. And I'm like, what the hell do they want? What do they want? They want like $6,000 or something from yeah. this woman who yeah. is like, has no money. Uh, so there's one last option that we explored. And that's if you have a third party professional write a report saying that she's truly a victim of these certain types of crimes and she has a uh, like a mental issue because of it, then then that can fly. So there is a PhD psychologist that I use sometimes in my cases. Um, she's very good. And so I thought, okay, great. Let's, uh, I mean, I've never done one of these and I'm sure she's, this expert witness has never done one of these situations. So I talked to her, I emailed her all the law, what we need specifically. Uh, and had your nanny meet with her, and she wrote a beautiful report that saying that she's a victim of stalking. And this gets complex because civil stalking is different from criminal stalking. Civil stalking is just anyone that did anything to harass a person more than once. It's so broad, so, so broad that it was enough. And the, the um, other brilliant play that we did, we learned from the only person we could get advice from, um, my personal attorney recommended we uh, contact an organization, okay. but they only help like low income people. And they were all like, you make too much money. We, we can't talk to you. Mm. But we managed to get one of these like beautiful, kind hearted people that are just helping, you know, doing like pro or I don't know if it's pro bono, but like deeply discounted work for people who are being harassed by their landlords. He, she said, go to the courthouse right now before it's too late, because she had been served like three weeks ago and the time was ticking. She said, go to the courthouse and request a jury trial. Mm. Because when a tenant gets sued by a landlord, they have to pay for all the costs associated with that trial. Mm. So so she's like, do that, and immediately it won't be worth it for them. Mm. So Abby got down there, was able to change it to a jury trial, and that one trick is pro- is like so powerful. Because mm-hmm. it's going to cost them, what, huh. like 10 grand or something at least to, to go through that trial. Yeah, in my last email to them, I sent them the psychologist report, and I, I sent you my email, but I said something like, hey, uh, here is this report. I think this should be enough. And I want you to know uh, if you're going to email me saying that this isn't enough, what is going to happen after that is that I'm going to formally substitute into the case as the attorney and we will proceed with a jury trial. That's what's up. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. You know, maybe a week later they got back to me and said, okay, we're we're dismissed. So they, so Wow. David did the impossible, and I just want to thank you so much. Like, yeah, King. we talk we talk on the show, but David swooped into my life, yeah, helped me with the situation that seemed almost, uh, you know, helpless. I can't emphasize enough how I have never seen her like that. She was so stressed every day. She just didn't know what was going to happen. Well, the guy's still there. And this guy used to be her friend. It's such a weird situation to begin with. He's, he's just still squatting. Him. What? And he's just squatting. And yeah. yeah, he's right just squatting because the tenant. I don't think he's even paying the rent. He's not paying the rent. He's no, still no. living there with a bunch of like addicts. At, now that she's been removed from the situation, good. Stay there. Fuck those landlords. That's a hundred percent our attitude too. I was like, enjoy the fucking. <laughs> Is what you get. Enjoy it. Now, now that we're talking about it, I'm thinking I might send some more clients out there. So, you know. <laughs> I know a place you guys can stay. I know a good a great crap house you can stay at. Oh my god. Yeah, but and and David was so available, and you were so there, and you're just the man, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah. Of course. 
I'm just happy that we got the W at the end. Let's go. Yes. Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. And that is how P and P saved Ethan and Hila's nanny. Ethan took this opportunity to ask David about his latest video where he would not say what his client was accused of. So he asked if he could share the behind the scenes of this case. There was that one video we watched recently where you he wouldn't say how fucked up the crime was. Right, Did we ever ask David about that? Can you pull that up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there was one recently. I don't know if you saw us talk about it, but we could tell that dude fucked up. And it was one of the <laughs> only ones where you don't say what he did. So I was like, yo, this guy must be All really right, fucked. Right outside of Rachel Cucamonga Courthouse, where we scored big. Uh, at the outset of this case, it was really tough. I'll tell you, we had multiple so victims. We had multiple charges. Yeah, one thing we noticed the first time watching this, we you might appreciate it's just how big your eyes get <laughs> when you talk about how bad his crimes were. Just really big uh, at the outset. There it is. <laughs> See that? That was a that was a tough one for you, David. I could tell. Big, uh, at the outset of this case, it's really tough. I'll tell you, we had multiple victims. We had multiple charges. We had a lot of jail on the line. But I'm proud to announce that today we took a good deal. No jail. And this is going to be off his record in no time. How do you feel? Oh, wow. Go oh, great. You got me off. So what did he do? <laughs> can you say? Or what was yeah, yeah, he innocent? I can of? say. Yeah. Oh, he can say. Oh. It was a DUI. Started off as a DUI, okay? He's drunk and high. He crashes into a car that then crashes into another car in front of it. Mm-hmm. And he he's like, oh, shit. Um, the guy in the in the last car that gets hit is an off-duty police officer. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> he gets out of the car and he walks up to my client's door and starts cussing him out. Mm. And my client's like trying to explain himself like, I'm sorry or whatever. And by the way, this is all alleged. I mean, I wasn't there, but... <laughs> yeah, alleged, right. Yeah, <laughs> allegation. Yeah, no. Allegedly, the off-duty officer takes out a gun. Whoa! Okay. What? What the fuck? My client freaks out, reverses and gets the hell out of there. Oh. And and he like goes away a few blocks, you know, left, right, left, right, whatever it is. That's and, good and though. Park. That's your advice, right? To drunk drivers. Leave the scene. <laughs> he followed your advice. Not my advice, but I have seen it before. <laughs> With good outcomes, uh, right? And it has worked for other people, but not <laughs> my advice. Right, right, right. Uh, so this off-duty officer comes with his car and like parks like sideways so my client can't leave this. They get out of the car, off-duty officer beats the shit out of my client. Yo, Yo what, the, what the fuck? Allegedly, my client fought back and, and hit him first, whatever it is. So they charged him for battery for that. So it was it was DUI. It was hit and run. Uh, it was battery. Uh, and they found a bottle of Jack Daniels uh, that was allegedly thrown into a neighbor's property. <laughs> they found a half burnt joint on the uh, oh on the God. floor where you know the driver's floor, of my client's car. Uh, and it was tough, man. Planted they. For sure. they they're really going hard on this guy. In the end, he just got a DUI, no jail. Wow. Then David went on sharing how he helped another of his client using reasonable doubt to get him off the hook. And that's the last time PNP called into the podcast to this day. So we're almost at the end. Here's another dude uh, <laughs> that uh, you helped out. Second DUI. Let's go. I'm right side of court with my client. We absolutely crushed his case. <laughs> Look, this was a second time DUI. Yeah, he was leaving the Rufus Du Soul concert at the Hollywood Bowl. Had some drinks. Had a dirty dog, a delicious glizzy. He was and having a good ass time there. Oh, that sounds cool. Want to laugh? I was at that concert too. Oh. <laughs> and I also had a dirty dog. You know how good of a time that guy had. Mm-hmm. Rufus Du Soul, man, they get you partying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, 
allegedly he got behind the wheel and crashed into another car with an angry person in it who called okay. the police. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, what's it, the angry person? The angry what person. Idiot. Who cares? <laughs> no, he, who cares, he was man? Angry before the accident. He was angry before the accident. They're such. Oh. Uh, already have a bad night. Uh huh. It was at issue whether or not he was really the driver or if it was his girlfriend True. driving. Reasonable the doubt. The police never even asked him if he drove his own car. And he was just standing there talking to the police, doing the field sobriety test, never even asked him. And the other driver, his statement was was kind of iffy, too. So the prosecutors really oh, gave us a hard time on this case. <laughs> they wrote a three page internal memo on this case and ultimately sided with us. And now he's going to only get a reckless driving. All right. The DUI charges dismissed. And you're only getting a reckless driving, right. one year of probation instead of three years, instead of five years that they wanted him to have because it was a second time DUI. Mm-hmm. 0.23 BAC, very high blood alcohol content with collision. At the end of the day, they couldn't really, really prove it 100%. It was too risky if they went to trial. They probably, you know, they could have, you know, it was a roll of the dice. So that's why <laughs> it we. It seemed like, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he probably did that shit. So what was the statement of the of the other party that was iffy? He said, so in a DUI investigation, the police have to, they have to write down in the police report whether this person really was behind the wheel driving. Okay? Whether he's driving is an element of the crime. And they kind of took it for granted here, but... So they didn't ask my client, which is weird because, like, why would you ask someone if he drove his own car? Okay. Well, he had a passenger. Because it was so obvious he was driving, right? Yeah. But (laughs) what they wrote in the report was they talked to the other guy, the driver of the other car, and that guy said he saw my client exiting the car from the driver's side door. So that was their only, only basis for him being the driver. We turned around. And I mean, that's said, pretty good. That's pretty good, though. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't deny. I didn't even deny that my client was seen exiting the driver's side door. Right. We admit that fact. Mm. We love that fact. It is true, <laughs> and that's why we admit it. The problem is this. My client got out of the passenger side door. His girlfriend gets out of the car. She's freaking out. He gets into the driver's side to move the car, mm-hmm. but the other driver said, no, 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 don't move the car. Just let the police come. And so my client got out of the driver's side door Never drove. without ever moving the car even an inch. That's what happened. Mm. Reasonable doubt, my friend. Yeah. 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 Fucking legend. <laughs> you guys better be calling David. <laughs> People are saying, have you considered this for a slogan, better dial Dave? <laughs> and that's really damn that's good. really good mm-hmm. <laughs> that's really damn good better dial Dave I'm telling you man mm-hmm. you're the real deal <laughs> alright th- uh, thanks for calling always a pleasure to hear from you my friend yeah, let's go thank you for all let's your help go. and uh, yo y'all better be dialing Dave <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys always a pleasure being here and uh, I'll see you soon He's actually incredible, though. He is insanely good at his job. That dude gets dubs all day. You know, you had told me that he had helped out your nanny. I, I guess I didn't realize that he did it pro bono. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, incredible. I offered to pay him, but he was just hooked us up. What a guy. Yeah, yeah. no, he was super nice. What a guy. Yeah. He was really nice, man. He, he really helped us out. This is David's last appearance just before the summer break during the live show. He was invited once again to give his legal advice about showing the prolapse video to the live show's audience. Thankfully, this time tickets were sold only to people above 18, allowing Ethan to traumatize his whole audience legally. All right. So, um, so okay, guys, this is the part of the show which I promised was going to happen. <laughs> wow, you... Okay. We have the infamous prolapse video. I don't know if it's legal. So I brought out my attorney to counsel me. (laughs) 
So are you excited, Howie? Are we going to watch this together? Yeah, I'm going to watch it in the car. <laughs> oh. oh, Howie. We need the mic, though. We need the mic. Don't steal the mic. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so David, thank you for being here. How's business? Really good, thank God. I don't think his mic is on, by the way. Yeah. Really Let's good. Let's go! Let's go, let's go. Business is really good? Business is really good, thank God. Thank and God. And we're Hashem. busting our asses for the people. All the villains of Gotham. Let's go. Okay, so the reason I brought you here is for your, I need your counsel. All right, what's going so on? So you've seen the video, so you know what I'm talking about. I can't forget about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. About it. <laughs> okay, so last time we did a live show, David was the only one to view the prolapse video. Okay. Now, the last show was all ages. That was a mistake. <laughs> this show is 18 plus. You check their IDs? Did they check your ID? Did they check your... Oh, no. Wait. Oh, shit. I don't know. I think, I think that... <laughs> Wait, that might actually be a problem. Fake. I don't know. Okay, uh, but... <laughs> that might be a problem. Did they check your guys' IDs? Oh, God. All right, look. As an attorney, I must... I cannot engage in conduct that is unbecoming of an attorney. Okay. I'm not asking you to prolapse. Right? Now, the problem is that whether it's legal or not, I'd be engaging in conduct that's unbecoming of an attorney by telling you to show it to all these David, people. have you seen your TikTok? Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Jaws this, of Life. This is really, really fucked up. And I can cuss because you guys are above 18. But you want to show it anyway, don't you? Uh, you don't listen. I do, I do. I have to. You, We've come too far. You don't, you don't listen to your attorneys anyway, so, do you? So what is your counsel ultimately? Don't do it? Look. You can't even advise me it's so fucked I, up. I, I can't even advise you, but I, I just want to say something to, to the guests because you guys have been so good to me and I love you so much. And I saw this video, all right? So just because I love you, I'm going to give you an advisement. All right, viewer discretion is highly, highly, highly advised. This video is very, very, very fucked up. Well, it depends. Well, but, let's not let's not paint. You know, it's Hunger FF. Well, he's the best at what he does. But look, I mean, plan, I mean fuck that. One man's prolapse is another man's treasure. But given your reaction, I think you're all gonna like it. So, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You've been warned. So if somebody sues me, you, you'll represent me? And I'll be representing Ethan, so be careful. Don't even think about it. Thank you. And David will do anything to win a case. Hell yeah, let's, let's go. go. All right, so here's what we're gonna do, and I'm being dead serious now. This is the long-awaited group viewing of the legendary prolapse video. All right, let's go. So here is the story of how David became a part of the H3 universe. And we will probably keep hearing from him occasionally when legal consulting is needed. We certainly enjoy his legal insights and he allowed some great discussions on the right for defense, the legal system, second chances, and rehabilitation. That is all for today. If you haven't seen my Uncle Gabe video yet, I would recommend watching it. And if you are looking for more content, not many people know this, but I have a second channel where I post highlights of Ethan's live stream he does in his basement every week. If you would like to support the creation of my videos, you can find me on Patreon or on Ko-fi, links in the description. Otherwise, you can simply support by sharing my videos. I want to extend a special thank you to my girlfriend who helped me edit that video because I'm currently dealing with carpal tunnel syndrome and also to my amazing Patreons whose support make it possible for me to allocate the time to make these videos. So shout out to Alicia D, Jade Gary, Corey Rupert, Lauren Corvo, 
Messy Mermaid, Purple Fire, Sarah Boggs, Skyler, Michael Krzyzewski, Ashley Reeves, and number one, Helen Keller Hader. Thanks for watching. With peace and love. With peace and love.